Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about travel tripods. In front of me, I've got five of my recommended travel tripods for 2024. Now, although it looks like it's about to rain, spring is just around the corner. So if you're thinking of traveling this year and you want to downsize or just take a bit of less weight around with you, then you might be considering a travel tripod. So let's get into the details. Now I am actually out in my garden at the moment because I haven't simply got enough space to show you five tripods in my home office at the same time. And I've also got my iPad here because some of these tripods have very difficult model numbers and names. I can't remember everything. So the first tripod, which is on your left, I've got the Freewell Travel Tripod. This has just been released. So February of 2024, this came out. They have sent it to me for review, so I haven't had to buy it, um, but I'm allowed to say whatever I like about this. The next one is the Peak Design Travel Tripod. This is the aluminium version. I paid for this with my own money pretty much as soon as it came out. So I've probably owned that for maybe four or five years. In the middle is an iFootage Gazelle. The model number is TC3B. The next one over here is the Suray Traveler X. This is carbon fiber. So these are all carbon fiber except for the Peak Design one. They make a carbon fiber version of this, but it's a bit more expensive. And on the end is the KNF Travel Tripod. This is carbon fiber and I made a separate review of that. Okay, so let's delve into some of the details. Um, if you were to set these out in order of size when they are not collapsed, but they've got their legs in an open position. Now, one thing I don't want to overlook is that if you take this one, for example, which is the Suray Traveler X, it will fold down even shorter for uh, if, if you want to put that in your suitcase. So it does actually go smaller than when it's in the legs out position. However, I don't ever put my tripod inside my camera bag. So 100% of the time, I always have my tripod like that. So I would consider that to be the shortest length, not when you fold the legs back in on itself. Now, what you'll see is familiar with all of these is they are all Arca Swiss compatible. If a tripod company ever reaches out to me, I say, is it Arca Swiss compatible? Because all of my cameras and tripod they're using the same system. Now, I have typically peak design plates on the bottom of my cameras. This one is by Ulanzi. Uh, it's their sister company called Falcam. This is technically an Arca Swiss plate. However, it will only fit in some Arca Swiss compatible tripods. So if I take this peak design tripod, for example, try and put this Ulanzi one on, I've tightened that up, and I can still slide the camera out. So it holds it, but it does not hold it tight. So you just need to do your research. If you get a tripod and you use certain brands of tripod plates, doesn't necessarily mean that it'll work. Right, let's talk about how much these tripods actually weigh. And there are some variations depending on if some of them have detachable heads because the tripod legs will have a certain weight. And then if you were to combine that with a ball head, it might way more. Okay, so I'm gonna put these in order of how much the tripods actually weigh. All right, so I've now spaced these out. The lightest is on the left and the heaviest is on the right. I'll put the weights above this in the video editing afterwards. So that weighs considerably more than that. All right, now that we've talked about the weight of the tripods, let's talk about the capacity that these travel tripods can hold. Just gonna have to get something for this. Right, now this is my heaviest camera and lens combination. I've got a full frame DSLR and a Canon 100 to 400 millimeter lens. Uh, the camera's about one kilogram and this lens is about one and a half kilograms. Total weight, two and a half kilograms. Now in my video that I made reviewing the KNF as well as all of my other tripods, I demonstrated that this travel tripod could easily hold this camera and lens. But my advice is, don't. It's not the right tool for the job. I'm gonna put these tripods in order of how much weight the instructions say that they can hold, okay? Let's be realistic, okay? I would not put something three times the weight of this on any of these. It's good to know that you've got an abundance of capacity. I'm not really testing these tripods if I'm only putting half or a third of the weight that they can actually hold, but I just don't think it's the right tool for the job. With that in mind, all of these travel tripods are perfectly capable of holding a reasonable size camera and lens, no problem. 
Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split these tripods into two categories. Okay, you've got three on this side, which has a traditional um, either locking mechanism where you release every single leg one by one. And then on the right hand side, you've got these carbon fiber telescopic legs. Okay, if you've never seen this before, I reviewed this Suray Traveler tripod about a year and a half ago. And quite simply, you just twist the foot and you take all of the feet out at once. There's a significant time saving in doing so. And you don't have to extend it all the way along its length. You can literally twist these like so. It's not as easy as if you've got these knuckles on each one, because sometimes as you click them, it chooses which leg it's undoing. But essentially, this is built for speed. If you predominantly have a tripod where you just set it up at full height, having these telescopic legs is the future, seriously. So the Suray Traveler X and Freewell's The Real Travel Tripod have these telescopic legs. And that is why I think that these are kind of the new school way of designing travel tripods. When you go to the eye footage, this is also very, very well built. I have to say for a travel tripod, this feels really robust. So you've got what feels to be aluminum locking mechanisms, and then you just bring them all out and then you lock each one individually. So you don't have to do each leg individually because you can undo them all, bring them out and then lock each one. Some might prefer these locking mechanisms. Some might prefer the twist lock that you get on say, for example, the KNF, where you get these knuckles. That definitely takes longer. And then on the Peak Design Travel Tripod, it's exactly the same, but it's still unlock all the legs at once and then lock each leg individually. Let's see which of these tripods go the highest. If you are gonna put one of these in your camera bag or you want to put it in the side pouch and you're concerned that the travel tripod is actually gonna be longer than your camera bag, which does happen, then you might be looking for the shortest possible travel tripod. And you can clearly see here the design of the Peak Design travel tripod it does that. They are the dimensions for each of these tripods without any raising up of the legs or the center column. Okay, now before I get onto which one of these travel tripods goes the highest, if you are toying between two tripods and those two are the Peak Design Travel Tripod and the Freewell Real Travel Tripod, watch Photo Joseph's review of these two um, because it's really comprehensive and you'll get some really good information out of that. I'll put that in the description below. Okay, let's see how high these go once their legs are extended. All five of these tripods have five sections to their legs yet they all extend to a different height. If you're buying a travel tripod, you may want to know how high the tripod comes up without any center columns. If you're new to photography, then the center column essentially is not the most stable part of the tripod. So ideally, you're only raising the center column if you have to. So there you go. If this is one of the fundamentals of how high it needs to go, you might want to be looking at the eye footage. Let's raise up the center columns and see what difference that makes. So it's pretty similar actually, um, in terms of you can see the gradient of the tripods going up in the same manner, except for the eye footage. So essentially the eye footage is the tallest without any center column being raised up, but it doesn't have a center column. So what is impressive is that the Peak Design Travel Tripod is the lowest on the table when it's folded, yet it's the tallest when it's, when it's expanded. And that's because of the design. Now I've reviewed quite a lot of camera gear on my YouTube channel, tripods, monopods, cameras, lenses, monitors, loads and loads of stuff. And I would say that the most beneficial reviews are where people are comparing products against one another. Because at the moment, this is a newly released product. So is the eye footage. If you review that in isolation, you'll get the pros and the cons. Um, but let's just say you're in the market for buying a travel tripod, you probably are if you're watching this, then you'll want to know what my options are. I think the best way of reviewing something is to have an independent look at what the competition is like. Let's talk about money, because obviously that's a necessary consideration. Let's put these in order of how much they cost. So the cheapest of these five is the KNF. 
K&F is also known as Kent and Faith. And this one, according to their website, is 89 pounds. And I would say generally that the price is reflective of the quality of these tripods. The next cheapest is the Sure Traveler X. According to their website, this Sure Traveler X is 99 pounds. So if it's my choice, I'd spend the extra 10 pounds because I think you're getting a lot more quality. Predominantly, it's to do with the design of the legs. This one, you can put up much, much quicker. The legs are a bit thicker. They're both carbon fiber, but the Sure just feels a lot more reassuring. The next one in terms of cost is the iFootage, 229 pounds. The, the price has jumped up now. I think that the quality is definitely there in this product. Next in terms of cost is the Freewell Real Travel Tripod. This is 250 pounds or dollars. I'll put links to everything in the description below. And then proudly, maybe the most expensive and the heaviest of all of these is the Peak Design Travel Tripod. And um, like I said, I paid probably more than that four years ago when it first came out. But this has got a price tag currently of 330 pounds. And this is the aluminium version. The carbon fiber version of this is even more expensive. So there you go. If money is the defining factor, then these are your options. Cheapest through to most expensive. Now at the moment you might be thinking, well, it seems like a done deal. The Peak Design is the best, it's the most expensive. However, even though I've owned this for about four years, I would say that this does not get much use. Um, essentially when I first got it, I was taking it out all the time. Took this down to Brighton Beach at low tide. This got blown over by the wind, which was maybe justified because it was a very windy day. This landed in the sand and essentially sand got in this bespoke head here and it still sounds gritty to this day. I looked up in the instructions how I could kind of take this apart and maintain it and clean out the sand. That's not possible. Because this is so unique and the design is so tight, um, essentially you can't take it apart. So that's one of the downsides to this. You can't maintain this and kind of dismantle it in the same way you can do some other tripods. The other thing is that this is predominantly a photography tripod. This, the design of the head, you cannot, if you put a camera on top here, you cannot turn the head unless you raise the center column a little bit. Once you raise the center column, you can then undo this and then you've got the movement, the freedom of the top of the ball head. However, because it's so compact, that ball head kind of tucks into the top of the tripod legs and therefore that, that, that doesn't move at all. And I think that this, as I've already proven, weighs one and a half kilograms. It feels really, really heavy. When you put this on the side, I've got a Peak Design travel bag. I put this in the side pouch and I can feel myself leaning to one side. So there are a few reasons why this does not get as much use as it should do. The one that I've had for the longest after that is the KNF travel tripod. This is very lightweight. You can see I've got an attachment here. I've actually got a quick release belt because this doesn't weigh very much. I sometimes clip that to my belt there. Overall, I would say that the price reflects the quality of this tripod. Okay, I've got a biro here to demonstrate my next point. Okay, this is the KNF tripod. I can put a biro through the legs. There's a gap big enough for a pen to fit through. If you take the Peak Design Travel tripod, there's no gap to fit a pen through. It's because of the design. Essentially, if you take traditional tripod design, including the Sure, you've got these three kind of, it's a triangular point, and then they have the center column going through the middle of that triangle, and then a leg on each side. But again, I can comfortably fit a pen. So I think that the evolution of tripod design is, they're just getting rid of these traditional, I'm trying to fit circles into a triangle. It doesn't really work. You end up with loads of gaps. So when it comes to tripods like Peak Design and now the Freewell, the center column on the Freewell is kind of um, a chamfered triangular shape. And what happens is when you close the legs there, it's about a millimeter gap. You cannot fit even the nib of a pen in there. This is efficient design. I can almost get my hand all the way around this Freewell travel tripod. So if you take a traditional tripod, the way that the top of the legs are designed, you can't fit your hand around this whatsoever. When I compare all of these tripods, both the iFootage and the Freewell are the most effectively designed. I can almost get my hands all the way around and touch my fingers. 
Um, so we've already covered the peak design, no good for video unless you wanted to keep your camera static. If you're looking for a video tripod, you need to be looking at the Freewell or the iFootage, or you need to be getting a different head entirely for the, one of the other tripods. So when it comes to the features of the iFootage, surprisingly, considering how small this video head is, I've been using it and it does actually create very, very smooth footage. You can see it's dampened in the pan direction and the tilt direction. And because this doesn't have a central column, the tripod head itself can be leveled independently of the rest of it. So if you undo that, you can see that there's like a bowl mechanism where you can tilt the entire head. Very, very impressed with the results of that. The other thing I really like about this is the mechanisms to extend the legs out. Just remember that without raising the center column, this was the tallest travel tripod out of all of them. And without removing any center column, if you wanted to do some woodland photography where you're shooting mushrooms or insects or something, you can literally just splay out the legs and now all of a sudden your camera is just this far off the ground. So that is another benefit of the eye footage. The other tripods that I've got on here, you can remove the center column but on the uh, Freewell version, you have to undo the screw here. You undo some bolts here, this detaches, then you can lower this. So it's good the fact that this ability is built into the tripod. However, it just takes a bit longer and that's probably why I never do it. The other secret feature that the iFootage has that none of these other tripods have is integrated spikes. The rubber feet here, if you just turn them clockwise, there you go, and I'll put that down and scratch the desk. If you need some spikes for extra stability, the iFootage has got you covered. Now, most if not all of these tripods come with a carry case and some of them come with accessories. I won't cover everything here because it will just be an incredibly long video. It, with the Free World, because this is a new product, this is a new invention that I don't think I've seen before. Um, the Peak Design has a phone holder tucked into the center column and then it kind of folds out. Uh, so that's built into the Peak Design. Now this is a new design that I've never seen before. The Free World Travel Tripod comes with a plate and you turn over the plate and you hinge both of these out and it's got a spring in it and you can actually mount your phone in there. So a phone holder built into the tripod plate. That's clever, I like that. Uh, whilst we're on the topic of the Freewell Real Travel Tripod, I've already covered the fact that this is very, very efficient on space. You can't see even through the gaps. Like of all of Freewell's products, really, really well made. You've got independent control over the panning, and this is, again, well dampened. So if you need a travel tripod for video, this is actually really good. Um, this has got a much, much bigger, more comfortable handle than the iFootage. The iFootage uh, handle is well made, it's absolutely solid, um, but you end up kind of using it with one finger or two fingers. Whereas the Freewell one has got a foam handle on it, it's a lot more, it's a lot more comfortable to use. Freewell have created a new design for this head. I think it's very, very versatile, but it can be a bit complicated until you learn how to use it. It's got maybe too many options because they've created something new here. Uh, so if you're making video, you've got control over the pan, so you can tighten that up. And then up here, you undo the red part, and then you've got, again, control over the pan. But that pan is independent of what's happening in the middle. Now this is where things get interesting. They've added a ball head to a traditional video head. So on this side, you've got another red lever. You undo that, and you've got a ball head. I think that this is so compact that they've had to combine two different levers into one position. I've said previously when I was reviewing Sure's um, video head that I didn't like, there's not much gap between the underside of the camera and this tightening mechanism. Let me, let me show you. Okay, if I'm looking to put this camera on the tripod here and then tighten that up and you can see, I've literally, you know when you're tightening something in a small gap, you're just turning it little, little bits and pieces at a time, you can't actually get and tighten up this. So I'm a massive fan of quick release systems. So on the Peak Design, literally just put it on there. That camera is on that tripod head. Again, with the KNF, I've put a quick release plate on here. Do that, that's on the tripod. When it comes to these other mechanisms, I've got to tighten it up. It doesn't take that much longer. However, it's just another step 
that you have to just make sure is that tight is that tight so with the free world version because it's so kind of it's so compactly designed there's not a massive amount of space to get your finger under here to tighten that up so if you did have a big camera and a heavy lens on here and you were attaching your camera not the lens to the tripod plate and it's critical that that is done up tight so that your camera doesn't fall off now if you use their tripod plate you get a smidge more room however this tripod plate does not work with any of my other accessories. One go on my gimbal, one go on my quick capture clip, on my rucksack. I predominantly don't use the plates that come with these tripods. I think the design of the Free World Travel tripod is really good, but you're in danger of having too many options. So I've got one knob there to raise the center column. I've got one there for the ball head, one here for the tilt, one here to put the camera on, one here to control the pan at the top, and one here to control the pan of the head. I think it's innovative, um, there's just a lot going on. Okay, information overload. You probably didn't think that there was so much to cover in travel tripods. If you're curious why I've got so many travel tripods, um, essentially I get offered these for free and if they are good brands and good products, then I accept them purely so that you don't have to spend your money on them and you may make a mistake. So ideally, I just provide you with my recommendations, tell you what's good, tell you what's not so good, and it's zero cost to me. Uh, I'll put links to everything in the description below. They are not affiliate links, so I'm not getting anything financially out of this. Obviously, I'm going to have missed things because I've not delved too deeply into each one of these tripods. Thank you to the companies that have sent these through to me, and hopefully you appreciate the, um, the compliments and the feedback. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.